There are hundreds of species of harvester ants found in arid places across the earth. These ants specialize in harvesting seeds, usually from a variety of plants. Some species make enormous nests comprised of thousands of individuals. For most species, all these offspring come from a single queen. Many species have mating flights triggered by monsoon rains. During these events, new ant queens and males leave the nest. Thousands gather at mating locations. Males, having served their purpose, will die soon, but queens go on to found new nests. These little ant queens will dig feet into the ground and lay their first eggs. The queens carefully tend their young for weeks until finally the first worker emerges. Less than 1% of colonies will survive to adult stages. Yeah, harvester ant nests uh, can be quite large, so the colonies contain, can contain thousands of individuals. And so it starts off with one queen starting to make, found her own little nest. Uh, she carefully takes care of her eggs, her brood. Eventually those, those brood become adults and can start foraging, taking care of others, nest members, and slowly that nest builds and it starts to accelerate almost exponentially. They can grow extremely fast, but that first year is really critical so that she has to take care of those, uh, those eggs and those offspring. And not until that they are old enough they can help her can the colony really start to expand. Fully established harvester ant colonies are big ecological players. Through nest digging and seed harvesting, these little ants can have wide-reaching effects. Historically, many native harvester ants have been considered pests, but careful research has revealed their many important ecological roles. This is a harvester ant nest, and you can see they've spent quite a lot of effort to pile up thousands and thousands of pieces of gravel and soil into what we call their nest mound. And they've also done a lot of effort to clear what we call the nest disc of any vegetation. So this big cleared area. And these can get huge. These can get over 10 meters in diameter. And the other amazing thing is that they can last decades on the landscape. They can become kind of permanent landscape fixtures because harvester ant queens, they can live over 30, 40 years. Now, along the rim of the nest disc, you can see that vegetation is enhanced. So all this vegetation here is, uh, and is flourishing because it has access to nutrients that the ants are bringing back and sequestering in the soils. So ants are constantly foraging for seeds, bringing back detritus, de uh, dead arthropods, things like that. Um, and they're, they're actually sequestering nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, magnesium, potassium. That's all higher in nest soil than it is in background soil. And so these plants are really able to uh, benefit from being able to access those nutrients. There are many harvester ant species found in arid places across the earth, but they are particularly abundant in the western United States. Here, nest densities can exceed 100 nests per hectare, with nests occupying over 15% of the land area. In these systems, nearly every community member is affected in some way by the ants. So like I said, they mostly focus on seeds. So they pick up seeds in their habitat. They might actually actively forage seed within a seed pod or within the plant. But most often they're picking it up off the ground. So they choose certain seed species, bring it back to the nest, and use that as a resource to feed their young and also to feed each other. And they supplement that with other resources that they find, whether it's uh, dead insects, captured insects, uh, fruit, or trash that someone has thrown out along the trail. Whatever it may be, they're opportunistic and they're going to, to pick up that and supplement their diet. But the primary focus is really seed. And what's really fascinating is as they move in that seed around, they may drop it, they may move it to new habitats, and even when they bring it in the nest, they may place it in a location that that seed may end up uh, germinating and growing. So they alter the composition of the vegetation in that habitat and thus are important members of, uh, or important in influencing the composition and location of certain plant species.
In the past, many ranchers and rangeland managers viewed harvester ants as pests because they cleared land, which seemed to reduce the amount of forage available for cattle. In some cases, there were attempts to eradicate harvester ants completely using large-scale pesticide applications. But modern views on the role of harvester ants on rangelands have changed. Ecological studies now indicate that ants are largely beneficial to plants and rangelands. Yeah, so the harvester ants have been considered pests because uh, it's thought to that they denude the landscape, they uh, prevent certain plants from growing, they may influence uh, the presence and feeding of cattle. Uh, but what we're finding is that uh, they actually improve habitat for many ant species or many plant species. For instance, the, the rim vegetation is often flourishes and uh, as a result of runoff and nutrients and reduced competition. But what we find is that in light of disturbance, whether it's climate change or a drought event, that that rim habitat can persist and allow plants to remain and as a result, create resilience in the habitat. So this species can create heterogeneity, and resilience to disturbance, and, uh, and thus are really important there. I think they've been there thousands of years, can promote these species, and, and are probably, uh, many species have been reliant upon them in times of stress or drought, or and especially with climate change, we might see that the presence of these ant discs, nests, uh, may provide habitat and allow these plants to persist when they wouldn't. In their recent review paper, Derek Yui and Dr. Richard Hofstetter examined evidence for both pest and keystone roles of harvester ants. They found that the keystone roles of harvester ants were well supported with scientific evidence, but pest roles were not. Harvester ants are keystone species, and a keystone species is an, an organism or species that has a disproportional effect on the environment, and it could be effect on the community, that could be composition, the functioning of that community, or organisms, other organisms within that community that rely on the presence of that keystone species. So again, it, it may they may not be abundant or they may not be speciose, but these keystone species alter or create habitat or resources that other species rely on. And so in this case, with the harvester ant, they influence the functioning or ecosystem services that are in that environment. So for instance, they alter the soil in a way that increases aeration, uh, water movement, uh, nutrient uh, concentrations within that soil. And as a result, uh, it improves that habitat for many species and many other species are reliant on those uh, nests for uh, whether abundance or resources, something they need to persist within that environment. Thus, the ant is a keystone species and influences the community that's found there. Other things that are reasons for why they're keystone species is uh, they provide habitat for many other organisms within that nest. And so there's uh, organisms that specialize on ants or, or on resources within that nest. Uh, these are more mechophilic or mechophiles that like to and specialized within that nest and are only found associated with that species or with harvester ants in general. And what's amazing is that uh, they move and exist in those nests and with the, the community and with the workers in that nest. They mimic the chemical senses, they mimic the communication, and they often trick the ants in that nest to allow them to stay and to forage within that environment. These species include fungi, bacteria, uh, other insects, and that it's truly amazing they can increase the biodiversity within that site and uh, really improve uh, interactions with these organisms and provide habitat for them. Harvester ants also play important roles in food chains as both predators and prey. Opportunistic and armed with powerful mandibles, Anything that ants can overpower is a potential source of food. It's reported that some indigenous people would even clear their blankets and clothes of lice by placing them on harvester ant nest mounds. 
For many arthropods, birds, lizards, and small mammals, harvester ant workers are an abundant food source. For example, some species of endangered horned lizards are entirely dependent on harvester ants. You know, I've always found harvester ants very fascinating, and that's because they have such wide-ranging roles. I'm constantly learning new ways that they affect other community members out here. And you know, they're kind of similar to uh, prairie dogs, underappreciated in the scope and the magnitude of their ecological effects. And so there's just there's so many different community members that can benefit from it. Whether whether it's sage grouse, sage grouse prefer when they're lecking, the males prefer to stand on top of the mounds to display to females. Or if it's just, you know, the simple clearing of vegetation here, oftentimes this is where You'll find that other animals, especially during the winter time, coyotes or, or pronghorn antelope, they'll prefer to bed down here. It's the only clear area out here that doesn't have prickly vegetation. So they actually provide other animals uh, a place to sleep, to rest for a minute. While most harvester ants are beneficial to ecosystems, there are some situations where they may interfere with restoration. Ecologists have found that ants prefer to harvest many of the same plant species used in restoration. In some situations, harvester ants may decrease the success of broadcast seeding by taking seeds. So the dominance and presence of these harvester ants in the landscape will influence our efforts to restore habitat. So after a fire, uh, we might want to throw seed out into that habitat and really promote certain species. But we need to be aware of what these ants prefer and what they forage on. For instance, we have, uh, there's one of our seeds that we're testing in the lab. And what we find is that the ants really love this species. It's nutritious, and, but it's also a species that we would put out into the environment to help restore rangeland habitat. But it would be a big mistake. We, if we threw it out there, uh, it's likely these, these ants may forage it and remove uh, that seed and really prevent our effort into reestablishing that that plant in that habitat. Here's another example of some of the seed that they like. They're carried back to their nest, forage on it, uh, and may reduce the abundance of particular seeds uh, in the environment, particular species that we're trying to restore. So we just need to be aware of that uh, foraging behavior and aware that they might uh, alter the success of those species that we put out into the environment. Understanding which plant species use nest rooms may also be important for restoration. In his dissertation work, Derek Huey found some invasive plant species are enhanced along nest rooms. So the enhancement of vegetation along nest rooms has in most cases been native vegetation and seen as, as a beneficial thing. But in my dissertation research, I've actually found a, quite a few sites like this where invasive plant species are utilizing ant nest rooms. And here, even though it's a nest and in winter, you can see camel thorn is growing thicker along the nest rim. Bull thistle behind me is growing thicker along the nest rim. And so in some cases, these harvester ants may be playing an important role in invasion dynamics. And this is understudied and a lot more work needs to be done. Some species of harvester ants possess incredibly powerful stings. In fact, the most venomous insect known is the Maricopa harvester ant. While a single ant carries very little venom, it is quite painful to be stung. This is the main association for many people with harvester ants. Being stung is not an experience you'll soon forget. As with wasps, ants have become feared and hated. But unlike wasps or bees, harvester ants cannot fly and they are relatively easy to avoid. Again, they have a painful sting. They bite and sting. Uh, and I would be crying probably if they actually got me, but they didn't. And, you know, this isn't they don't typically sting and bite everything. Only when they're trying to defend their nest will they do this. And uh, it's an extraordinary evolved defense that uh, many uh, hymenoptera, the wasps, the bees, and ants have is the disproportional pain versus the amount of actual damage. So the, their stinger is tiny and the amount of venom uh, that they actually introduce into my body is extremely small. Uh, but 
it's really painful. And again, this is because it evolved as a defense against rodents who are trying to steal their uh, cache of, of seed. And so the more painful that is, the less likely that rodent is going to come and forage. And unfortunately for humans, it's painful to us. And so uh, we want to definitely not touch these. I don't encourage you at home to do this, uh, but it's it's proved very successful. And as a result, the, the, they're very successful organisms across the environment. And one of the reasons is their defensive capabilities are so extraordinary. After all my observations on harvester ants, the most striking thing to me is just how gentle they can be. While most of our experiences with these ants are a vigorous nest defense, the truth is most of their lives are spent underground, tenderly caring for each other. It's a peace and a harmony that could never be achieved by our species. Harvester ants are sure to continue to fascinate us through their abilities to influence ecosystems. There is still a lot to learn about these ants, but it is clear that they have important roles in their native habitats. While we wish to all avoid their sting, hopefully we also appreciate these keystone species. Thank you.